What's up guys, it's your boy Senron. I recently made a community poll and turns out the majority of you want to know more about how the mastery system works. So today we're going to be focusing on the mastery system in League of Legends and uncovering the secrets to achieving an S plus performance in every game. So without further ado, let's begin. What did I do to deserve all of this? Why me? Why now? First I get fired from my job, then my girlfriend left me for a Draven main, and now my parents think of me as a failure and won't even speak to me. And all that because of one stupid thing. Why did I choose to one trick Jax? I swear I'm not a pedophile. I reckon at this point, I need a miracle to fix my life. Champion Mastery is a progression system that tracks a player's skill and experience with each champion. At the end of every PvP game, players receive a grade that scores their performance in comparison to the whole player base in that respective champion and position combination. The ranks range from S+, to D-, with S+, being the highest in the room. Next to grades, players also additionally gain Mastery points, which accumulate over time. These points eventually unlock new Champion Mastery levels and flair as the player advances through the system. From what I can tell, the champion point calculation is based on a mix of game length, game mode, win or loss, and group size. Remember this, as we'll get into more detail about it in the champion points farming section of this video. For now, all you need to know is that a 30 minute game rewards roughly 1000 champion points for a win and 180 for a loss. Champion Mastery is currently distinguished in 7 levels, the first 5 of which are achieved at champion point thresholds. Unplayed champions are considered level 0. After playing a game which rewards champion points, the mastery level immediately enters level 1 and starts progression towards level 2. You need a total of 1800 champion points for level 2, 6000 champion points for level 3, 12600 champion points for level 4, and 21,600 champion points for level 5. After reaching mastery level 5 with a champion, the system to further level up changes. This is because level 6 and 7 are instead earned through hextech crafting instead of mastery points. Earning an S grade with a champion that is level 5 or level 6 will reward you with a mastery token. These tokens can be used in combination with either a champion shard or blue essence to permanently unlock the mastery level 6 or mastery level 7 grade. At Mastery Level 5, you receive a Mastery Level 6 token with a grade of S-, S-, or S+. You need a total of 2 tokens and either the Champion Shard or 2450 Blue Essence to unlock Champion Mastery Level 6. At Champion Mastery Level 6, you receive a Mastery Level 7 token with a grade of S or S+. This time, you need a total of 3 tokens and either the Champion Shard again or 2950 Blue Essence to unlock Champion Mastery Level 7. The biggest question you might have right now is why? Why would you spend time grinding the same champion over and over again just to get a higher number? Isn't it much more important to go outside, meet new people, have fun and maybe live life a bit? Nah, Champion Mastery actually has benefits. For one, it lets you and others know which champions you can play and like playing. Some of your champion mastery is openly displayed in the overview section of your profile tab. Displayed here are the three champions with the highest level and mastery score. If you want to see your progress on all champions, just head on over to the champions tab on the collection. The first three levels of champion mastery are fairly unimportant. As soon as you reach level four, however, you unlock the mastery badge emote loading screen display and announcement banner. The look of these changes depending on what champion level you are currently at. The mastery badge emote is kind of a meme or BMing tool nowadays. It's meant as a way to display your skill and dedication with a champion in the game. You can activate it using either the command slash mastery badge or with the key combination control plus six. People mostly only use this if they're toxic and are trying to tilt other people. I rarely use this myself but I know some Yasuo and Kali one tricks that spam this shit every 12 seconds. 
I personally prefer the loading screen display and announcement banner changes, as they are passive effects and don't require any active input to flex on someone. Meaning, you can fully concentrate on performing well without having to worry about compensating for something you don't have much of. I'm talking about key fragments. I know you're as a perma chat band. Speaking of which, achieving an S grade, or being pre made with someone who achieved one, also grants you a Hextech chest, if you haven't received one for the champion you played. You can earn a chest every 7 days and can store up to a maximum of 4. You can see how many you have left to earn under your profile tab. Under the champion section, or in champ select, you can see which champions you've already gotten a chest with. This resets every season, so if there's only a couple of champions you like playing, don't worry about it too much. As previously stated, the champion point calculation is based on a mix of game length, game mode, win or loss, and group size. It's currently still not known how the calculation is made. There are some official values and theories, but no secret formula. At least, I didn't find one. Anyways, let's move on. Let's start with game length. You simply earn more the longer a game goes. This could be objectives done, CS accomplished, or just minutes passed. We don't know. But all these things just happen naturally as you play, so no need to worry about the details here. So the longer the game the better? No. Try to keep the game short and sweet and focus on maximizing the other effects. A 35 minute game rewards you with roughly 1100 champion points. A 15 minute game rewards you with roughly 600 champion points. Round it down to points per minute and voila, you can see which one's better. Now onto the best game mode for grinding champion points. I'd recommend normal games for leveling specific champions and ARAM or a rotating game mode for fun and diversity. ARAM and rotating game mode games usually last a bit shorter than normal games, but these game modes can be heavily RNG favored, so choose Summoner's Rift for consistency in terms of wins. Speaking of wins, go for wins. Always. You receive a huge penalty for losses. I'm talking about nearly a thousand mastery points difference. Plus, winning is more fun and will keep you motivated. You also receive champion point bonuses depending on the party size. These range from nothing up to a 10% bonus. 10% doesn't sound like much, but it does add up. Especially because you need to play more than one game to reach the last level threshold. Plus, uh, I mean, come on, playing League alone in 2023? Really? First of all, find four people with similar goals to you. However, these people must be somewhat good on the champion slash the lane they're playing already either because they know how to play macro or practice the champ they want to level up in custom games, bot games, smurf accounts, or maybe even the PBE server. Next, you want to play to end games early. This means that the win cons can be a bit tricky. Usually you want to get the gold funneled into a champion that will snowball to dominate the mid to late game. Now you have to funnel into champions that will dominate the early to mid game. This might mean weird jungle pathing, weird roams or just genuinely weird macro altogether. But your goal is to make the enemy FF15 or to destroy the Nexus pre-minute 25. You'll have to find a specific strategy here yourself, simply because I'm not able to tell you one, because I don't know where your win conditions are or what you're playing against. But I can tell you that an early orientated playstyle requires you to actively do shit from the get-go. Either call out opportunities, look for catches or roams, deep wards, or look for solo bolos if you can. If you're a jungler, consider dropping drakes, as drakes are a late game win condition, and you don't want the game to last that long. Instead, look to kill Herald and cross map place it when you see the jungler either on top lane or bot lane. Or uh, just spam gank the shit out of those enemies. Yes, tryharding is exhausting, but this is technically the fastest way to grind those champion points. No one's forcing you to do this strategy either. If losing a couple of games is fine for you, and you're in no rush to get that mastery level up, then relax a bit, chat with the people you're playing about other things, and enjoy the social time. Mastery points will come, so long as you play, so treat it more like a marathon than a sprint. So, 
you want to get that final S or S plus on insert champion meant for high ELO here to brag to all your friends, huh? Well, uh, let me show you how the system calculates your grade and how you can take advantage of it to receive an S grade in almost every single game. The first thing you want to do is hop on the stats tab under your profile. Here you will see a multitude of things, ranging from your playstyle as a player, time in games played, your average KDA ratio, and most importantly, the champions you played. Click on one of the champion icons to open up a new tab. Here you can see all of the criteria the system checks before giving you a final grade. Again, the way the grading works is by comparing your stats to the global average on the champion and lane you're playing them on. If you're higher on one stat than the average player, that will benefit you positively and grant you a higher grade. If you're lower in another stat than the average player, however, it will benefit you negatively and might deduct that higher grade again. Let's quickly address the criteria so that you can understand the ways to cheese the system into giving you a better grade. The three main categories are combat, income and map control. Combat checks for KDA ratio, kill participation, utility score, damage per death and damage share percentage. Income checks for damage per gold, early gold advantage, early CS advantage and CS per minute. Map control checks for objective control rate, vision score per hour, roam dominance score and kill conversion ratio. Alright, so before I begin, the majority of these strategies might be a bit unorthodox. Or uh, toxic. Not enough to get you banned, but you will definitely see people get upset about it. It's best to do these in a group of five, where you explain what you're trying to do to them so that you don't ruin the fun of others who just wanted to try something new. Let's start with the combat criteria. KDA ratio is the easiest to cheese and it's done by simply playing defensively. Don't believe me? Let's do the math. Here you see Rengar, who is currently hard carrying with stats of 30, 7 and 12. And here is Soraka, who is currently 1, 1 and 7. Guess who has the higher KDA ratio? Okay, well, you already know it, Soraka does. Even though she is giga useless and didn't carry, let alone participate in anything. This means that whenever there is a risk of you dying from a call or play you're about to make, back the fuck up and wait until something is 100% free. It doesn't matter if the play you're about to do is gonna win you the game, if it means that you will die, don't do it. Remember, you don't have to win to get a mastery token, so eyes on the prize and make sure you don't dies. Kill participation is all about winning the laning phase and ending the game early. The best strategy here is to have a couple of premates spam gank your lane and once the enemies either rage quit or caught on to what you're doing, just start deathballing every couple of minutes and look for kill opportunities everywhere. Solo bolos are also really impactful in this category as only you get the KP credit. You can also politely ask your other premates to not kill their opponents without your help as their solo kills are huge chunks in your kill participation. Utility score includes CC, team healing and team damage reduction. This one's harder to cheese as it's mostly champ dependent, but it's possible with some items such as Radiant Virtue, Redemption or Everfrost. If your champion has a healing, shielding or CC applying ability, consider buying a tier at your first base, but not upgrading it to a full item and then spamming that ability whenever it comes off cooldown. Damage per death ties in with the points I made in the KDA ratio cheese. Don't die and the damage per death goes up big time. Damage share percentage again is hard to cheese. I'd suggest the tier strategy here as well, but this time on champions with a long range poke ability. Items that provide you with additional damage help greatly too. The second category is income. Damage per gold is quite easy to achieve as a standalone, but conflicts with many of the strategies you have in combat and others in the income category. You could just not CS at all and look to be a nuisance all game long, which yes, gives you a fuck ton of damage per gold, but it's not gonna give you any income or decent combat related stats. I'd recommend focusing on the other income stats as damage per gold comes naturally if you don't build too many troll items. Just look to trade whenever you can and you should be fine. Early gold advantage ties into the kill participation strat. 
if you get three successful ganks and farm normally, you already have a 900 gold advantage compared to the average player. Early CS advantage and CS per minute requires you to last hit well. You can gain a fairly decent amount of CS in three different ways. 1. You get a kill and experience lead on your laner, then proceed to bully them at all stages of the game. 2. Correct wave management. This one's hard to do and even harder to explain in a short amount of time. I plan on making a guide on wave management in the future, so make sure to subscribe or remember my channel name to not miss it. 3. Decent macro. Again, a very detailed topic. Correct timing to be on side lanes is the key to staying ahead in CS after ending the laning phase. Don't worry, a guide is planned here as well. So in short, if you go ahead in CS in the early game, consider looking to end the game before things might get messy. And if you're behind in CS in the early game, consider stalling the game and spending some time on side lanes to get the CS per minute up again. The third category is map control. Objective control rate is the ratio of objectives you help take compared to your team's total objectives. This is similar to the kill participation strategy and should be treated the exact same. Try to always be at the objective your team is currently doing, or tell them to get off of it if you can't be there. Vision score per hour is something I've seen a lot of people struggle with, but this one's fairly easy. All you have to do is buy a far sight or blue ward and place it somewhere no enemy will ever path through, and use control wards like regular wards. You gain one point per minute of ward lifetime provided, or one point per minute of ward lifetime denied. So let's say that you place down five far sites in the span of 10 minutes, with a two minute cooldown each. You gain 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0 vision score. Which, yes, does not sound like a lot. So let's add another 10 minutes and see what happens next. Now you have 20 plus 18 plus 16 plus 14 plus 12 plus 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0 vision score. 110 vision score. For practically nothing. And this doesn't even include the vision you cleared with either Scryer's Blooms or Control Wards. You might think that people call you a noob or spamping those wards, but no, no one really cares. I mostly do this strategy, as it's the most harmless one, and play the game normally whenever I need an S or S+. If you're a jungler or support, then I'd still stick to Sweeper. You could pair it with an Umbral Glaive to clear more wards faster if your champion can build it. Otherwise, make sure to buy two control wards every time you base and use them to clear or set up vision. Roam dominance score requires you to do successful roams. The way you cheese this is by asking one of your premates if they can play a champion with decent setup then whenever you have an opportunity to roam, roam. RDS also ties into the kill participation death ball strategy a bit, I guess. Kill conversion ratio is the ratio of enemy champion takedowns to objective takedowns. Most players already start an objective whenever the enemy laner or jungler is dead. Don't drop free objectives and this should be at a fairly high percentage. If you're a decent player in general or are playing with people below your skill level, I would strongly advise playing the champion you need or want an S grade for on a lane which they usually don't see play. Here's a game where I played Tarek ADC and neither hard carried nor trolled a lot and yet I still get an S simply because 90% of the player base who play Tarek ADC have no clue about what they're doing and just end up intentionally feeding which lowers the average stats. This isn't a must of course so just play the lane you enjoy the most and try to stick to the following strategy. You want to play with a group of 5 people, preferably ones that are low elo, which all play around you. Get a lead on your laner with the help of your friends, and then proceed to use set lead to terrorize the other enemies. But make sure not to drop CS, objectives, or wards by doing so. Communicate with your teammates to participate at champion or objective takedowns, and let them know what you're going to build, so that they can adapt. Spam your entire jungle full of blue wards, and clear out the enemy jungle regularly, with either your control wards or with a teammate that has a sweeper. End the game early if you're popping off or stall the game out to a point where you can pop off. And whatever you do, always remember that dying is gay. So don't die. I'm about to blow. Oh. Uh, so uh, yeah, just, just, just play good, I guess. It's not that hard. 
And that's it for this video. I hope you not only enjoyed it, but also learned new things which you can use to get that flashy BM emote. Not sure if I have a thousand subs yet. At the time of recording the audio, I don't, but thanks in advance. You're all the most epicest of epicestest gamers, and if you're not only a gamer but a real thug, well, let's just say that I would gladly be a thug hunter with $300 on hand. I also got accepted into uni, so I got some time again to work on videos. Let me know what you guys want to have as a 1k special. I'm pretty much down for a lot, and you've all been very helpful and creative with suggestions. Anyways, as much as I like talking to you, I don't want to hold you up any longer than I already have. What? You, you, you don't want to leave because you like the sound of my voice? Well, that's okay. I understand. Nah, just kidding, I don't. 